Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this installment of Renegator Wrestling. Happy Monday. I am the Renegator Wrestling JJ Williams and I am here as always to answer your viewer submitted questions. Um, first and foremost let me once again apologize for how late the show is going up and not getting up at midnight obviously like normal because we had the Double Down with Double A results show to upload and we had the In the Rants results show to upload both of which you should now be able to see on the YouTube channel. So let's get straight into the questions. Pairing 78. Hey JJ, if you had to pick one wrestler to co-host your show with, who would it be and what would the mashup be called? Well, in honor of the co-host that I would pick, there would be no need for a mashup. I would not disgrace or disrespect this legendary mic worker like that. I would be on Piper's pit with Hot Rod Roddy Roddy Piper. He is the only person I could think of that I would want to co-host a show with. I've got so much respect for that man as a worker, a talker, and everything he's done for the business. Second choice would have to be William Regal. Um, I can't really come up with a title for that one. So leave what you'd like to see that show called with me and William Regal in the comment box. And if you can think of one for Piper, go ahead and leave that in there too. But I wouldn't want to disgrace Roddy Piper by throwing some kind of hybrid mashup together. I would just be on Piper's pit. Henry B. Shrek. Hey JJ, would you link to see Jim Cornette go into WWE Hall of Fame? Yes, I would link to see him. Um, I would like to see Jim Cornette go into the WWE Hall of Fame. I don't know if it'll happen. He's been way too vocal about things going on with WWE ever since he was fired from OVW. But I think Jim Cornette does deserve a spot in the WWE Hall of Fame at some point. The True Norwegian one. Hey JJ, I was wondering... The last year and a half, we have a lot more WWE wrestlers breaking kayfabe. Behind the scenes, during segments like Download with Ziggler, and during on-air promos, i.e. Cena's comment about Ziggler's years in the business and previous gimmicks. Do you think this will continue and or escalate? And how can this change the non-smart marks perception of the product? Um, I think this will continue because I think this is part of what CM Punk and Triple H are trying to bring to the new era of wrestling that they are trying to create, have it more reality based. Um, I think it all started with Punk's initial pipe bomb, obviously, and has kind of continued since then. Um, how it will change the non-smart marks perception of the product? I'm not really sure because as long as they stay swinging from the C-Nation nutsack, it's not really going to matter because they're going to be true to their Cena's, their Rybacks, their Sheamus's, their Orton's, and they're not going to care like they already don't care about things like a 434 day title run that CM Punk had the longest in the past 25 years. You know, they're not going to care that The Rock is the WWE champion and despite having been gone for 10 years, deserves another run with the belt. You, you have to look at that from a business perspective. The Rock equals money. Bottom line, Vince's ratings are dropping, his ticket sales are dropping, and even though it's a short-term quick fix, it's something to help boost ticket sales, boost ratings, especially heading into WrestleMania, their Super Bowl. More advertising dollars will be spent. Can you imagine if The Rock showed up at the red carpet for the Oscars or something like that with the WWE Championship? the publicity that would be garnished for the company. Stocks are going to go up. 
the casual fan and the people that just love punk may not understand the logistics behind it. But from a business standpoint, giving The Rock the Belt was a great move. Um, I know I totally got off track there. I apologize. The tr true Norwegian one. Um, but it's it's not going to change smart marks the non smart marks perception in the long run because as long as they're sipping Vince's Kool Aid, they're going to do whatever Vince wants them to do. Mr. Randy Smooth. JJ, here's a few questions for you. Number one, who do you think could have a good Iron Man match from the current WWE slash TNA roster? Dolph Ziggler versus CM Punk. <coughs> Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. Dolph Ziggler versus Cody Rhodes. Are you sensing a theme here? Hell. I don't know about his rest, but Regal could probably still put on an excellent Iron Man match. He's been out of action for a minute, but I think, you know, he gets in there with someone, get that rust off and some conditioning back in him, he could probably pull it off. Um, for TNA, Austin Aries versus Bobby Roode could probably be a great Iron Man match. Um, Austin Aries versus AJ Styles. Samoa Joe could probably have a good Iron Man match. I mean, hell, go back and look at the Joe Punksy series from ROH. Most of those matches went 45 minutes to an hour plus. Um, number two from Mr. Randy Smooth. As the WWE is shitting all over women wrestlers, would you like to see the wrestling minis return? No. I'd rather take shitty women's wrestling over shitty midget wrestling. Nothing against midgets or the vertically challenged, but the women equals sex appeal, equals ratings, equals dollars. I would prefer real wrestling women that also look sexy, but that's why I've got the knockouts. Poor Tamina and Natalia standing there holding the proverbial WWE bag and not getting any kind of respect. Christopher Jordan. Hey JJ, I have two questions. One, do you think that someone else set Punk up and that it was not actually the Shield who attacked the Rock at the Rumble? No. There was a picture that even circulated on Facebook last night that had Dean Ambrose attacking the Rock. It was definitely the shield. No ifs, ands, or buts. Why else would the lights be off? If it was Brock Lesnar that came and attacked The Rock, the lights could have stayed on. Because nothing was said about if Brock attacked, that Punk would be disqualified and the title would be stripped. The stipulation was only that if the shield attacked, therefore there'd be no purpose for the lights going out if it wasn't the shield. Why would Michael Cole be sitting there saying, the shield is right in front of us, the shield is attacking the rock, the shield, the shield, the shield, if it wasn't them? That would be stupid. And let's be honest, if it was somebody else, i.e. a Brock Lesnar or, heaven forbid, the Undertaker, yeah, they wouldn't have had to take that goddamn long to do the attack. It would have been in, out, done. You could hear them fumbling around for a long time during that spot. Because the shield is not that experienced yet. They're still a little on the green side. Logan Gonzalez. Oh wait. Forgot the other part of Christopher Jordan's question. Sorry about that. Do you think Chris Jericho should get one last run as the WWE Champion? Thanks and love the show. Yes. 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 Definitely yes. Logan Gonzalez, two-part question for you. Getting a lot of two-parters today. JJ, let's say WWE or TNA were on top with storylines and had the top-of-the-line booking. Do you think people would still bitch about something? I say yes because in my eyes, the internet and social media have hurt wrestling a lot. I completely agree with you. Even if 
we were having Attitude Era storylines, Attitude Monday Night War ratings, <coughs> the internet community would be bitching about some thing. If the internet had been like this back in the Attitude Era, people would have probably been bitching about how Austin was so bionic and The Rock <coughs> was Superman, you know? But the internet was in its infancy then. Not as many people had it. So, definitely a lot of people would have been bitching still. That's what the internet is for. To anonymously bitch about shit. It's not designed for you to keep in tabs with people across country and across, you know, oceans and shit. No. The internet was designed for you to go on and bitch about shit without being found out. Uh, second question, what are your thoughts on YouTube trolls? You know, the ones that say stupid crap like Ryback is better than Punk, or they say why does WWE keep signing these ROH rejects? My thought on those people is they're just that, they're trolls. As much as I don't like them, I pull a John Cena when it comes to them and just shake them off. I pay no attention to the trolls because I only listen to constructive criticisms, not hate. There's a big difference. You can tell me my show sucks and then give me constructive ways on how you think I can approve it, and then you can go on there and say my show sucks because you're fat and you're ugly and you have no knowledge of wrestling. That's a troll. I pay no attention to the trolls because they are swinging from the McMahon nutsack, drinking pitcher after pitcher, gallon after gallon of his Kool-Aid without the right amount of sugar because, let's be honest, the product fucking sucks right now. These ROH rejects, go back and look at some of these matches. God damn, do your fucking homework, trolls. Don't be the grumpy old troll that lives under the bridge from Dora the Explorer. Do your goddamn homework. I already cited examples. Go back and look up these Punk Joe matches. Go look up Tyler Black in Reign of Honor and PWG. Go look up the Kings of Wrestling from CZW, PWG, and ROH. Go look up Austin Aries, Brian Danielson, and all these guys. from ROH and PWG. Go look it up. Do your homework. These guys are fucking amazing. There's a reason that Triple H has scouted them and Vince has signed them. Now that I'm off that pedestal, Ian Ezzie Buxton, what do you think of TNA dropping all but four of their pay-per-views? I think that is brilliant. I think it's a great way to stay ahead of the curve. I've been saying that WWE needs to go down and do that for a while. Probably since the first episode of Renegade Wrestling, and I might have even been saying it on a hearty conversation. WWE needs to go down to at least the big four, if not six pay-per-views, one every other month. Rumble, January. Mania, March. June, King of the Ring. August, SummerSlam. November Survivor Series and throw one more in there somewhere. Do money in the bank. Or just get rid of that all together, bring the money in the bank match back to Mania and maybe throw like No Way Out or Elimination Chamber in there in February so you've got that three month build up to Mania and you've got a couple months to just chill. Build storylines on Raw. Draw angles out. Make them more suspenseful instead of just giving us a three-week angle that culminates at a pay-per-view and doesn't get heard of again. Build shit up. That's what the true wrestling fans want. And I understand WWE is geared to kids. They don't have that type of attention span. That's why they have five moves of doom. Fuck that. Your bread is buttered by people that make money and spend money. 
five-year-olds don't have bank accounts. 30-year-olds have bank accounts. 20-year-olds have bank accounts. The 20 and 30-year-olds are buying the t-shirts for the little five and six-year-olds. You need to cater to everybody, not just one demographic. But I think TNA is trying to stay ahead of the curve, and maybe, just maybe, WWE will see that TNA will still do great pay-per-view buys with only four shows a year, and then maybe alter to that format themselves. Last question today, Matt Adams. Hey JJ, WWE recently posted their all-time Royal Rumble match entrance. Of the individuals involved, who do you believe would win it? Okay, for those of you that did not see this article on WWE.com, the individuals involved were Hacksaw, Big John Studd, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Yokozuna, Shawn Michaels, Lex Luger, Bret Hart, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, <coughs> Triple H, Brock Lesnar, <coughs> Batista, Rey Mysterio, Undertaker, John Cena, Randy Orton, Edge, Alberto, Sheamus, Kane, Kevin Nash, Big Show, William Regal, Santino, Andre the Giant, Mick Foley, The Warlord, CM Punk, and Beth Phoenix. Okay, problem number one, you've got all the winners in there except for two. I understand why you left Benoit out because you don't want to acknowledge his existence, but why wasn't Mr. McMahon listed in there? I know he was a fluke win, I know it was all part of the storyline, but if you're going to do the all-time rumble, then you need to have every winner that you acknowledge in there. So McMahon should be in there, and let's throw the fucking Warlord out. Okay? Why is Santino in there? One second record? Get rid of him. Why isn't someone like Daniel Bryan in there? You know, why isn't Chris Jericho in there? But out of these people involved, I can definitely say I would whittle it down to Hogan, Flair, Austin, Rock, Cena, and Taker. Those six men would be the final six. Final four. Four is where it gets really tricky. Hogan, Cena, Austin, solely on the fact that they're multi-time Rumble winners. And then, it, it's a close one between Taker, Flair, and Rocky. Really, really close. I think I would have to go to the edge to Flair, though based off of how long he lasted in the Rumble he won. Final two? Probably... Probably Hogan Cena. Austin would probably be the odds-on favorite to win because he's a three-time winner, but... Depending on which Austin was in the Rumble, I think the final two would probably come down to Hogan Cena. And sadly, this day and age booking, Cena would win. But it would set up the WrestleMania match that Hulk Hogan is suing his doctors over the fact that he didn't get to have. It would set up Hogan versus Cena. For those of you that haven't seen online, Hogan is actually suing his surgeons for botching his surgery and making him miss out on the payday of a Hogan Cena match. That, I can't stand Hogan, I can't stand Cena, but that would be a match for the ages. If you thought Rock Cena was hot, then if we had gotten Hogan Cena in, let's say, 05, 06, when he was still in the company and active, when he was having matches with Michaels and Orton, Hogan Cena would have been fire. It would have been something to be seen. That's it for the questions this week. What did y'all think? Leave your comments in the comment boxes, video responses.
become part of the show. I know I said I wasn't going to plug that anymore, but fuck it, you got one more shot. Video responses become part of the show. Be on the lookout for In the Pink tomorrow, Stat Boy Rants on Wednesday. Not sure what we're going to have Thursday yet. It might be a Chicks. It might be In the Pink. It might be the Lady Killers show. I know he's on the road right now. He was in Phoenix last night for the Rumble. He's in Vegas tonight, and I believe he's going to San Diego tomorrow for SmackDown. So if you see the Lady Killer, give him a shout out. Another Renegade will be here on Friday. Think Double A is going to have a Super Bowl show coming up this weekend. So be on the lookout for that. And until then, I will see you next time right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel.